Hi chemists, welcome back. Last video we primarily focused on properties of liquids. We're now going to talk about more properties, however we're going to focus on something called vapor pressure, abbreviated V period P period, and boiling point, which is abbreviated V period P period. At the end of this video you should be able to describe vapor pressure and how it is affected by temperature and nature of the liquid, explain the relationship between boiling point and vapor pressure, and predict a way to boil a liquid without changing the temperature of a liquid. Vapor pressure is defined as the pressure caused by the evaporated particles in a closed container. Usually we'll measure this with a lid because if we have a lid or a cap, the vapor pressure will be steady above the liquid so the pressure can easily be measured. Remember, pressure is a measure of gas particle collisions, right? The force of gas particles. So when we talk about vapor pressure, we're literally just talking about the vapor pressure above the liquid converted into a gas. If you were to have a container without the lid, the particles would diffuse or move out, similar to what we talked about back in our PowerPoint presentation for gases. If you were to increase the temperature of a substance, you would see the vapor pressure of that substance increase. This occurs because more particles again have the kinetic energy needed to evaporate. We would see that there is a direct relationship, which basically means that as one thing goes up, the other thing goes up, or as one thing goes down, the other thing goes down. As the intermolecular forces or IM forces in a liquid increases, the vapor pressure decreases. So remember, intermolecular forces are forces of attraction. So it would make sense that if there's greater attractive forces, we're going to see the vapor pressure be smaller because the particles aren't becoming a gas quite as quickly. So and a way to summarize that is to say, as the forces of attraction are stronger, it is more difficult for those particles to break free from each other and form a gas. We would say that this is an example of an indirect relationship. So we would see, for example, as one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. And that's exactly what we see here. As the attraction goes up, the vapor pressure goes down. If we have, again, stronger intermolecular forces of attraction, we're going to see less evaporated particles or have a less vapor pressure. So that's your summary. Again, those intermolecular forces are what restricts the movement of the molecules and keeps them from being able to form a gas. Let's talk about how it relates to boiling point. So boiling point is abbreviated B period, P period. So the boiling point is the temperature at which a substance will boil. Boiling, if you recall, is a conversion from a liquid to a gas throughout the entire substance. Whenever you see boiling, you can differentiate boiling from evaporation because remember in evaporation, you do not see any bubbles. So with evaporation, you see a conversion of the liquid to a gas specifically at the surface. But when you're boiling something, you'll usually see bubbles throughout the entire substance. In order for a liquid to boil, you need to have the vapor pressure of the substance equal the atmospheric pressure, the pressure pushing down on that substance. There's this thing called a normal boiling point. So this is the boiling point at a specific pressure. So the boiling point at standard pressure, which again is at sea level, which is one ATM, one atmosphere. If your substance is not at sea level, you will not see the normal boiling point be observed because again, the atmospheric pressure is different. And we just learned that boiling point is related to the vapor pressure of the substance and the atmospheric pressure. The normal boiling point for water is 100 degrees Celsius. As I mentioned, boiling point is not constant. It really depends on the atmospheric pressure. If you have high atmospheric pressure, that means that you're going to have boiling point increase. If there's low atmospheric pressure, that means that your boiling point is going to decrease. 
So remember, when a substance is boiling, the temperature remains constant because, right, the energy is going to kind of moving those particles further apart and breaking free of those intermolecular forces. Whenever you have a phase change, your temperature is always going to be constant. So at the boiling point of a substance, the added energy goes towards the conversion of the liquid to the gas instead of increasing temperature. And if you've done those heating curves and cooling curves, you could identify a phase change because that's a flat region of the curve. Boiling can also occur by lowering the atmospheric pressure until it equals the vapor pressure. Like for example, in a vacuum, like you saw with the peeps, for example, in that video clip, if you watch that. So here's a cool visual that I think will make a little bit more sense to kind of summarize what we just talked about. So let's focus on the boiling points of water at different atmospheric pressures. So the green is supposed to represent, for example, at sea level. The um, kind of ocean is below sea, vol sea level, and then the mountaintop is above sea level. So again, at sea level, we are going to expect to see the normal boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius, right, and at 1 atm. If we go below sea level, remember there's more atmospheric pressure, so let's pretend we'll just assign an arbitrary value of 1.5 atm. As long as it's greater than the sea level, we're okay. And then if we again go above sea level, let's pretend that we have a atmospheric pressure of 0.8 atm. So at sea level, we would ex expect to observe the normal boiling point at 100 degrees Celsius. But as we mentioned, if we were to go below sea level, we would see a greater boiling point. So that would be, for example, 110 degrees Celsius. If we were to go above sea level, let's say to Colorado, for example, we would expect the boiling point to be lower than that at sea level. So therefore it would be like around 90 degrees Celsius. So to summarize, it's going to take more energy to have the vapor pressure equal the atmospheric pressure below sea level. So therefore a higher boiling point is going to be observed. Conversely, it's going to take less energy to have the vapor pressure equal the atmospheric pressure on a mountaintop and so therefore, we're going to have a lower um, boiling point. So I hope this video was helpful in understanding the relationship between boiling point and vapor pressure. As always, you guys know you need practice. So good luck, and thank you so much for watching.